Well, hello, everyone, and a welcome to another Thursday Chapel for our St. Peter's School families. More Than Conquerors Through Restoration. We'll be taking a look at just the beauty of what Christ accomplished, especially as he uh, reconciles himself to Peter, Peter who betrayed him three times after the resurrection. So let's begin. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join with me in praying a responsive prayer? Just join in with the Parts Mark group. O oh Lord, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. You comfort and help us day by day. We trust your loving care. You are the King of heaven and earth. We give you praise and thanks. Alleluia. Let's pray. Jesus, you invite us to pray and promise that when two or three come together in your name, there you are with us. Answer our prayers and fulfill our desires according to your wisdom and love. Strengthen us in your truth and grant us life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to take a moment since today's focus is being more than conquerors through restoration. That, that means that what we were lost in, what we became uh, before God, condemned, orphaned ourselves from him and his grace, he restored and now all that took place by the death and resurrection of Jesus, of course, his perfect life in our place, through the forgiveness of sins. It's important for us to never forget that, and to even daily offer up to the Lord God all our sins, uh, reminding ourselves that we are so much in need of his grace, his restoration, which he freely gives in Jesus. Uh, so there's a hymn, Lord, uh, to you I make confession, that I'd like to join in singing with, uh, contemplating or thinking about uh, also our need for God's grace interspersed with some passages, a chance for us to confess. Uh, we will uh, take a look at this clip uh, created by Coin A. So let's begin to focus a little bit more on our need for God's grace and offer to him all our sins that we might truly be restored and in that more than conquerors. my way that 
Today's reading comes from John chapter 21, 15 through 17. This is the account uh, some three weeks after Jesus had risen from the dead, where Jesus encounters his disciples up in Galilee on the sea, and after a great miraculous catch of fish, and after eating, uh, Jesus confronts Simon Peter about his sin, about the three times that he denied him. Jesus does this not to condemn Peter, but to lift him up in grace and to restore him to his place as a disciple, even an apostle, to go and spread the good news that his forgiveness, Jesus' love, makes us more than conquerors. So we read, When they, that would be the disciples, had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. 
The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I want you to think about Jesus' relationship with Peter and what would cause Jesus to forgive Peter after he had denied him in the hour of Jesus' greatest need. And three times with cursing and swearing. And as you think about that, I want you to also think about Peter. How would Peter ever make up for this? I mean, how is it that Peter could even be in Jesus' presence right now? How could guilt, his, his conscience, not be overwhelming him already? It's only just a, a surprise, a miracle that we would even think Peter would approach Jesus at all. Uh, and yet here it is. And yet... I think we ought to remember that. I bet Peter's heart was just so broken, so troubled. I bet Peter, because of his sin, just couldn't believe he could ever, ever be restored. I think Peter, if if I could be in his shoes, I think he would be thinking, when is Jesus going to just let the hammer drop and tell me that I'm no longer his? I want you to think about that as we watch this video uh, from the skit guys portraying this interaction between Jesus and Peter. Grace is God's unmerited favor for us, his crazy love. And the truth is, many times we struggle understanding it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples struggled with understanding grace. Jesus, is that you? You're alive, I can't believe you're alive. Okay, I was in the boat and I wasn't catching any fish, okay? But I heard this voice and the voice said, cast your net to the other side. And so I'm thinking, I'm a fisherman, I know what I'm doing, but I'm not catching any fish, you know? And so I throw that net over there and then a gaggle of fish pop into that net and I'm going, this is a total miracle. Who could have done that? I need to know who told me to throw the net to the other side. And boom, I look up and I mean, there is you. You're looking at me on the seashore going, it is I, the Lord, and you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. <laughs> this is awesome. Andrew, get out of the boat, come on. Peter, yeah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. You're alive. This is so great. Good. And, then feed my sheep. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on, man. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? I love you. Yes. And I'm so sorry about that rooster cluck, and I had no idea what that meant, but I do not. I'm better for it. All right. Okay. Good. Then feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Come on, get out of the boat. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? Jesus, mere words cannot describe the passion that I have for you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. Good. Good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you, though. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, yeah. do you remember uh, the morning the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in the upper room trying to figure out what to do next, you know, because we thought you were dead. You know, you were dead, you know, and we're trying to figure all that out, you know. And Mary comes running up, and Mary's like saying, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. Like, keep them out. You know what I'm saying? But as she kept getting closer, I heard her correctly. She was saying, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And we're going, who's alive, who's alive? And she said, she was at the tomb, and the tomb was empty. And she said that the, there was an angel there. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay, he is risen. And so me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, he's totally lying, all right? I beat him, FYI, all right, you know? And we get down there and I'm looking in that tomb and it is, it is empty. There's nothing in there, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything Jesus said he was going to do, and you did it, and it's done. Let's go. This is so great. Wait, yeah. the angel said what? Uh, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. You've risen. Let's go. This he is said okay. what? Go tell the disciples and Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why did you say my name? Peter, that's grace. No, no, I don't, I don't deserve that because that night people kept coming up to me asking me if I belonged to you, if I was with you, and I kept denying you left and right, all right? No, no it'll take me my whole life to make up for what I did. It was unforgivable for no, what I did. No, What I did on the cross 
was meant to take what is unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. You know, when it comes to hurting others and being hurt, we really only have three choices to deal with sin, betrayal between people. And just think of this, uh, as you live in your houses with your siblings or with your parents, or you think about maybe the last few days with your friends before uh, all of this came about and now we can't see each other, uh, I'm guessing that there were some hurt feelings. I'm guessing that uh, there's some times where Um, there's conflict and one or the other or both are guilty of hurting, of being selfish, of betraying. And that sin can cause us to really, really have sad, terrible feelings toward other people. Even if we're guilty of doing the wrong, our instinct by nature because of our sin is to hurt others. And it's not to be open and honest, it's to hide away, it's to cover up, it's to move on, it's to ignore what's happened. But we notice from Jesus' encounter with Peter in John chapter 21 that there's a better way. There's the true way of God which restores us really to each other and makes us more than conquerors of our sin. So as you think about the three choices, you know the first choice is revenge. If somebody hurts you, or if you hurt somebody else, uh, our instinct, our sinful nature wants us to attack and to make it worse, to make someone pay, and to never forgive because we've been so hurt. We kind of see that in Peter a little bit, at least from that uh, skit there. Not that he was taking out revenge on Jesus, but he was looking to maybe minimize it. Maybe that was Peter's attitude, to just forget about it. And, uh, you know, thinking God, well, he'll, he's ultimately going to take revenge and I'm just going to see and, and wait to see what God does because I don't deserve to be forgiven. Uh, so he couldn't come to face it because he thought God would just judge him because that's what we do with each other. Right. So we, we assume God must be like that. But God has got of grace. Another way is just to ignore it. And, and I think with that skit, Peter was really just going to ignore it, it seemed. Uh, He was just going to try to move on maybe and see if things would just play out and just everything should be understood. But Jesus doesn't want that either. Jesus wants to point out sin and do away with it through love and through forgiveness, through payment from his death on the cross. Which leads me to that last thought. I want you to think about the people in your life who have hurt you. And I want you to think about the people in your life whom you have hurt. What are the three ways that you're addressing this? Have you sought revenge? Have others made you pay for what you've done? Have you just ignored it and looked over it and just thought, well, we'll move on? Or are you bold enough, courageous enough, strong enough to forgive? And where do we get the power to forgive? Only in Jesus. Only when we recognize that what Jesus did for Peter, Jesus also does for us. Jesus says, do you love me? And we say, yes, Lord, you know. And he, he calls us to be his own. He restores us to that beautiful place of being people in his church to care for one another out of love for him. So that's my prayer. As we uh, continue to uh, be safer at home and uh, intermingle with our family members, uh, maybe reach out to our friends. And there's obviously the more we're with people, the more we're going to hurt one another. I'm praying that forgiveness wins the day and that you can be more than a conqueror uh, in that through him who has so loved you and forgiven you of all your sins. Just as we are bold to confess our sins to God and know that he'll forgive, we should be bold to confess our sins to one another and to forgive just like Jesus. May God help us do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and love. We are not worthy, and yet you love us anyway, and you've given us your Son anyway when we weren't worthy. And through his resurrection from the dead, after providing a perfect sacrifice, living a perfect life in our place, Lord, we're forgiven. And Lord, you point out our sin, 
And you do so boldly and directly and to save us, not to condemn us. Lord, you are amazing. Your grace is amazing. Lord, help us to be the same. Help us to love others and forgive, pointing out their sin in love, just as Jesus did for Peter. Lord, though we're humbled by that, we know that you will lift us up. Help us to do the same for others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. We'll close our chapel with our theme song for the fourth quarter. Let's sing. you see when you look at my life and evaluate me I'm even more than I believe when I feel so lost and act so weak yeah but who I am is found in him who died for me and lives again one who's not afraid to love with nails and cross and pain. My guilt and fear he overcame when he carried my sin and buried my shame. When he rolled that stone away, I rose with him on Easter day. So I'm more than a conqueror, I'm more than a conqueror. Whoa, whoa, in Him I'm more than I could ever be. Whoa, whoa, in Him I'm all I ever want to be. Whoa, whoa, I am His. step he leads the way as I follow the voice who knows my name cause I'm more than a conqueror cause I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror more than my doubts more than my fears more than my troubles more than my tears more than my weakness more than my sin not life nor death nor death or anything can separate this child of God from him can separate this child of God from him whoa whoa every tear from my eye Cause I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror Cause I'm more than a conqueror Cause I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror Cause I'm more than a conqueror Cause I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror
conqueror. Whoa, in Him I'm more than I could ever be. Whoa, whoa, in Him I'm all I ever want to be. Whoa, whoa, I am His. Whoa, I am His. Whoa. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next Thursday. God bless everybody.